M0FXP, welcome. Let's set up the SCU LAN 10 with my FTDX101. Next step, pop along to the Yesu website, scroll to the bottom and download the bottom two files. One is the upgrade firmware, the other one is the instruction manual. You will end up with this group of files here. Extract them somewhere where you're going to find them. So I would create a new folder called Yesu 101. So just right click somewhere on your desktop, click new folder, call it Yesu 101. I just put an R there for remote. And then go to this file and just extract the whole lot to that file. So you go click extract, download WinRAR if you haven't got it, it's free. Just put it into Google WinRAR. Then scroll down, look for that file. You want it desktop. Put it wherever you like, but I've got it on desktop. And then I'm looking for Yesu 101. It will be in alphabetical order. There it is there, click OK. All the files are now there in one place. And the first thing I would do is double click the instruction manual here, and you end up with this window that we're looking at now. And scrolling down just for now, have a quick look. So we've got the accessory connector to the radio got the LAN cable going to the PC or laptop and the USB cable, USB-C at this end and then your printer square cable that's going to the back of the 101 or the 10DX. You may need Net Framework 4X so to do this just click Start Control Panel here at the top then go to Programs up here it says turn on Windows features on or off. Click that. It will populate and then we're just copying what's here. It says here Net Framework 4.8 which we've got it and it is ticked look. So that's good, that's installed. Let's install the software. Double click the file we selected earlier. Then double click the zip at the top that says firmware software then double click the yellow file look for the one that is called software which is the second one down double click you get another window appear set up exe double click that and then we're going to run through the process as the windows appear so I'll leave it live if it's boring just Fast forward past it. Got, got my HF radio in the background anyway. Next, next, yes to shortcuts. Having a little tune, see if there's anyone about. Forty meters for me is always good. Right, finish. We've got that installed. Now, if we click on the Windows squares, we can see that there is a file installed called SCU LAN. And for convenience, we're going to right click and pin it to Taskbar, which is basically at the bottom here. We need the IP address of this computer. Go to the bottom in the search bar click it and type in CMD, Charlie Mike Delta. You get the black window appear, double click it, and then here in lowercase, type in IPCONFIG and then enter. And at the bottom, you're gonna see your IP address next to where it says IPv4, and mine is 192.168.0.110. So just make a note of that. It's worth noting that this system will work on the Yesu FT710 and here are the connections here. Scrolling up, we also get to see the connections for the DX10, which are there. And the radio that I'm on, which is the 101. Looks to me like you do need the ACC connector on the FTDX10 and the 101. So we're gonna add that now between the radio. There's the ACC connector there. 
and on the back of the LAN unit. So there's the USB there, or the square printer, and then the, the round cable with the clip at the top there. And on the back of the LAN unit, you've got the ACC. I've put the ferrite ring that they provide with the cable tie. And then the LAN is in, and so is the, the DCI. But everything's actually turned off at the moment. And once we connected the ACC lead, same goes for the DX10, it started to flash, but the actual radio is turned off. And you can see the LAN is now starting to flash. LAN configuration is click in the search at the bottom and look for control panel. Click that and you get this window. At the bottom where it says network and internet, click view network status and tasks. Now in this window, click here, change adapter settings. The ethernet that we're looking for is here on the left. I do have my computer still connected to the internet via my, wi my Wi-Fi antenna. Now double click Ethernet, then go to Properties, here, yeah, Properties on the left, bottom left, you'll get this window appear. Then look for the one that's called Internet Protocol Version 4. Just highlight it by clicking it, then select properties and you get this. Now we're going to enter these numbers that are in the instruction manual. So click use following IP and just type it in. So we've got 192.168.49.10. and 10. Oh, wrong one. <laughs> Put in 10 there. Subnet mask, it should do that automatically, really. Let's just go OK. No, oh, there you are, it's done it. I clicked OK, cancelled, then it put it in. So that's everything in. We've clicked the use IP and click OK. So that's that part done, and you can click close. So let's double click this little blue window here that's at the very bottom where it's created a shortcut we get this and it says default user. I'm not sure why it shows it twice. Maybe it's because I click it twice. Let's, clo let's close it and click it once. Yeah, that's what it is. Okay, and then we'll paste that, copy, click underneath, paste, or just type it. Click log in with the radio on and it should log in. It did log in using default user, default user. The thing I had to do was make sure that I started with my Ethernet cable plugged into the PC and I removed any, any Wi-Fi that I had. And then it brought me to this window where I created my username and password, which was M0FXB and then a password. Once we got to that, then we were able to click login and it brought me to this window. You can now plug the Ethernet cable into your router Further settings for the 101 and the DX10 on page 27, so get these into your device as well. Pause this video, or just look on the manual, page 27, and on the 710, you've got some settings as well. There it is there, and that's page number 29. Okay, just pause this video. To return the Ethernet connection back to where you were, you just click the search, then control panel, then network, view network status underneath the title, click that. Then at the top left here, click change adapter settings. You'll see the wired connection now, double click. Go to properties. Then go down to Internet Protocol version 4, double click, and then click Obtain an IP address automatically, Obtain DNS server automatically, and click OK. And that gets you back to where you were. You can now reconnect your PC as it was, and your, 
your LAN box will now, the Ethernet will go from the Ethernet box straight into your broadband router and that's it. At this point we can now change the IP address to a local IP address that is similar to the hotspots ETC that you have in your shack. So we've chose this one here at the top, 192.168.1.99. The default gateway is the same as the other items as well, and it would be the one that takes you, if you put this IP address here, 192.168.11 into your browser, it will take you straight to your router. So it's basically pointing you towards the router. I did click apply. Um, we haven't remote controlled yet, but we are now in and we should now be able to fire up the system. So we will double click at the bottom here. You have two tabs that open up when you run the software and one of them is the control screen of the radio called the SCU LAN here. Double click that. You get this screen and then to connect, we click the on button here. quite loud uh, so we have success and it's looking fantastic I notice that there are different screen views if we click here at the top different windows there So I just click in the more, but the one I like, I think, is the first one because I'm sat to the left of the PC. So I've got full control here. We can tap on the frequencies, scroll up and down. There's individual volume and RF gain, which is very cool. I mean, it is very nice to look at. Different modes here, so LSB there. 40 meters. When we click main and sub here, it puts the, if we, we can click the actual scope and move frequencies around. Just by clicking the, or well, we've expanded the waterfall there as well somehow. Just by clicking the waterfall. You've got your filters, separate filters and notch. PTT as well and tuner at the top here which does work if you hold your finger it, it uh, tunes Vox, mic, proc, money, speed, sync, split on both everything is in you know is, is in times two with the 101 not sure how it works with the DX10 and this all works with the 710 I don't think you need the accessory connector I think it just works off USB but you know it's very good we've got VFO memory here memory to VFO VFO to memory AGC settings filter settings IPO which everyone tells me to turn off there you are what time is it here it's 7 in the morning in the UK shift width just looking at everything, there's the signal meter here at the top. You tap that, you have these showing. Same goes at the top. I love it, I just think it's really smart. The RSBA1 that I use on the 705 is good and nice to use, but this I think is feels nicer to use. We tap the filters here, I've got the shift showing there, I notice. Yeah, you'd be using. Oh, you still got your RX TX selections like you do on the front of the radio, where you select what you're going to receive and where you're going to transmit. P big PTTs here, which does work. So that's it. Thanks for watching. More to learn on this, but yeah, it's going to be very convenient. I can just sit at my PC, fire this up whenever I like, and I'm not seeing lots of RF coming into the radio. Normally, I would get that. Small signal there, what frequencies are, that's way out of band, so. We can scroll. Bye for now. Thanks for watching my channel, all the best.